Hello everybody, this is Brian Black here. Welcome back to Let's Play from One Flower Red. In this episode, we're going to go through the Silph Co. As Maria said, hundreds of first responders <laughs> attended Livingston's funeral in addition to her family and friends. These are just some additional uh, shots of video that you did not see earlier. Today's service was a chance to honor her memory and say a final goodbye. The street outside the War Memorial, as you see, was lined with service members ready to give Livingston one final salute. Uh, Johnstown police carried the U.S. honor flag, and that helicopter you see there flew overhead as a nod to Livingston's career. Jacqueline Kovac spent most of the day following the processional between services, and she joins us live with more on that. Jackie? Jen, departments from all over Cambria and surrounding counties took part in the procession for Janice Livingston, and a number of them considered it to be an honor to be a part of this day. Mm -hmm. Streets surrounding the Cambria County War Memorial were lined with emergency responders from all over the county, waiting to salute Janice Livingston and say their final mm -hmm. goodbyes. You know, Cambria County is kind of fortunate. We have a very tight-knit community uh, between all the area EMS. Uh, and fire departments, all the emergency services people, the police, everybody. They have a, a very close-knit community. Uh, someone outside of that probably wouldn't understand some of the uh, 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 feelings we share with each other. Few people gathered at the top of the incline to watch mm -hmm. Livingston and her family arrive for the funeral. Following the service, the entire fleet took part in the processional to Livingston's final resting place. Just before the ceremony, the Johnstown Fire Department and the West Hills Fire Department greeted Livingston and her family with a memorial arc that presented the American flag. Attention all stations and all personnel. The entire family of the West End Ambulance Service is sad to report that Janice King Livingston answered her last call on Monday. March 2nd, I don't know where first As Livingston's final call was read over the Cambria County Emergency Service line, a number of her colleagues bowed their heads. Wait, and wait, wait. Everybody's never had anything or ever dealt with anything like this. I mean, it could happen to any one of us at any time. You know, it's, everybody's going to miss Janice greatly. Uh, and today is, is tribute to her memory, her, her last thing we will. If you couldn't make it down to the War Memorial today or at any of her previous services to pay her respects, a memorial fund has been set up at Ameriser Financial. The donations will go directly to her family. For more information, go to our website, WJACTV.com. Reporting live in Johnstown, Jacqueline Kovac, 6 News. And Tony, you think about the weather in all of this and really, you know, bitter cold day, but it was brilliant with the sunshine. Couldn't have really been a nicer day to reflect and think of her and, and all of that. But really, yeah. uh, this cold weather might be behind us. We're hoping that this is it. Uh, this is what is a really nasty shot of Arctic air into the area last night into, the, into this morning. Bitterly cold, temperatures below zero in most locations this morning. And for everybody, good enough for records this morning. As cold as eight below in Clearfield, seven below in Dubois, two below this morning in Johnstown. Those are from our main reporting sites at the area airports. Outlying locations, even colder, seeing reports of 10 to 18 degrees below zero again last night and into this morning throughout Jefferson, Clearfield, Indiana, and Cambria County, southward into Somerset County. So just a brutally cold start, but the afternoon turned out pretty decent. Lots and lots of sunshine, temperatures jumping up to about 20 or so this afternoon with all that strong March sun. Just some high clouds coming in here or there. Otherwise, we are mostly clear at this hour. 19 right now in Dubois, 20 in Johnstown, 24 in Altoona, and 19. In Indiana will fall into the single digits for tonight briefly and then rise up to about 10 to 12 at daybreak tomorrow. Overall, a moderating trend on the way for the weekend and especially heading into next week. We'll look at those warmer temps when I come back a bit later on. Jen? Tony, thanks. We continue to monitor the condition of a Clearfield County firefighter who was left in critical condition Tuesday after a porch roof collapsed on him and two of his fellow volunteers. Devin Clark spoke to a firefighter from Sandy Township who has been leading support. Devin? Well, Jen, the firefighter I spoke to told me that it really doesn't matter which company you're from because all volunteer firefighters are brothers and sisters. And with that notion in mind, he tells me that he and many others have been traveling down to the Lawrence Township Volunteer Fire Department to offer help 
as needed. Now, Jeff Buck, the 18-year-old volunteer firefighter from the Lawrence Township Volunteer Fire Department, is still in critical condition after the porch roof collapsed on him and two other firefighters at the Daisy Street House Fire on Tuesday. Following the incident, EMA officials tell us Buck was unresponsive but was resuscitated. Since then, though, he's been in critical condition at UPMC Altoona. Now, recently, his sister wrote on Facebook that he is showing some signs of improvement as he is off sedation and breathing on his own. Still, he is being given seizure medis anti-seizure medications and may have severe brain damage. Now, today, Bill Seifert, a 17-year veteran from the Sandy Township Volunteer Fire Department, told us that he has been going down to the Lawrence Township Fire Department, as have many other volunteer firefighters from all over, to be on standby and answer calls as they volunteer with the others who served with Buck routinely, and they all cling to hope. The world down there is pretty sensible. Everybody's trying to think positive, hoping that he's going to pull out of this. We're all praying for him because we're all family. We're one big family, brotherhood and all that. And all the company are sticking together, trying to hope and pray for him. Now stay tuned because coming up at 6, we'll tell you about a number of fundraisers and events coming up to help Buck and his family. For now, reporting live from the Clayfield County Newsroom, Devin Clark, 6 News. State police are investigating allegations that three Altoona police officers used excessive force when arresting someone last month. The names of the officers haven't been released, but Altoona Police Chief Janice Freeling did say the officers will be on desk duty until the investigation is complete. State police tell us the investigation is in its early stages. The police department is also conducting its own internal investigation. A jury has been seated in Cambria County to hear charges against a man accused of first-degree murder. The trial for Earl Mitchell Jr. is set to begin Monday. Attorneys hope to select 12 jurors and two alternate jurors for the trial that is expected to last about four days. Mitchell faces life in prison if convicted of the murder charge. Police say that Jarek Adams, Adams was found shot to death in Johnstown's Oakhurst section. Mitchell remains in the Cambria County Jail with no bail. Police have decided not to file additional Hold charges on. against a homeowner at the center of an arson investigation. This after a mm. firefighter collapsed at the scene. Somerset Borough firefighter Edward Roddy passed away Sunday, three months after he suffered a heart attack while fighting the fire. Arson and other related charges were filed against the homeowner, but police mm. say the homeowner will not face any additional mm. charges related to Roddy's death. Mm. An autopsy revealed that Roddy died from severe coronary mm. artery disease. Police charge a Carlisle man with stabbing in State College. Brandon Frick was sentenced up to, thir up to 23 months in prison and has also been ordered to pay a $3,000 fine and over $16,000 in restitution. Frick was found guilty in January of one simple count of simple assault and one count of recklessly endangering another person after he got into a fight with several men. He's accused of stabbing a man after a fight during Penn State's blue and white game. Two other men were also charged. Intelligence officials are putting a warning out for local police departments. Next on 6, we take a look into the methods of preventing ISIS recruiting here in the U.S. And which GOP leaders will not be heading to Selma, Alabama for the 50th anniversary of Bloody Sunday. We celebrate the 30th anniversary of We Are the World. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Tonight at 7, here on WJAC TV. Bird on the job? Mm -hmm. Collecting work comp for four months or longer. Call us now to see if you're entitled to a lump sum of money. For a free consultation, call Edgar Snyder & Associates at 1-800-9-4-EDGAR. And remember, there's never a fee unless we get money for you.
here. The best time to save on the built Ford Tough F-150. The best selling trucks in Pittsburgh. Get a 2014 mm. F-150 with 8500 mm. total savings. Or lease F-150 Sorry. SLT for only $279 a month. Don't miss these auto show savings. Now at your neighborhood mm. Ford store. I'm Craig Great Notice this weekend in American Crate. Over 1,000 truckloads of living room furniture. Seven piece living room groups that include a sofa, love seat, coffee table, two end tables, and two designer lamps. You get all seven pieces from only $398 complete. Free layaway till tax refund. Same day delivery. Come to the Looney Docks this weekend only at American Freight 516 West Plank Road, right behind the car circus. Phone 944 2444. That's 944 2444. Get out of the house and celebrate spring during our spring open house at Yoder's Country Living Shop, March 7th and 14th. Heard on the jobs? Let our work comp attorneys help if you've been denied benefits, you're in danger of losing them, or it's time to consider settling your work comp claim for a lump sum of money. For a free consultation, call Edgar Snyder & Associates at 1-800-9-4-EDGAR. A second chance to have kids. I didn't mm. agree to any kind of vasectomy reversal without intending to be married. Her mom did provide the money for this. He got his plumbing fixed. They broke up. Judge Judy. Monday at 4, here on WJAC-TV. This is 6 News. Coverage you can count on. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security issued a warning to local police across the country concerning the trend of young boys and girls wanting to fight as part of the ISIS right. terrorist group. Mm. National correspondent Jeff Barnd takes a look. Under the Constitution, anyone in the United States can spew their hatred in cyberspace. And our intelligence community has the right to track would-be terrorists willing to act on that hate. If you wanted right after this interview to uh, get on Facebook or, 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 or get on FaceTime or Skype, you could do that. But could the U.S. intelligence community actually infiltrate ISIS by allowing potential terrorists here at home to make it to their destination, like Syria and or Iraq, mm. and then track each and every one of their movements as they join in the jihad. I think that's easier said than done. Uh, you'd have to have the confidence that you were able to really follow it to ground, whereas with you know being able to intervene earlier and stop it, you can prevent that. The FBI already acknowledges it's very hard tracking Americans and Europeans who have made it to Syria where ISIS operates. The U.S. Embassy in Syria is closed, and the CIA has no permanent presence on the ground. There are big consequences mm. when you abandon uh, an embassy mm. in a particular part of the world. Your intelligence to that part of the world is greatly diminished. Michael Steinbach, mm. the FBI's assistant director for counterterrorism, admits mm. once in Syria, it is very difficult to discern what happens there. This lack of clarity remains mm. troubling. Really, they will protect this nation from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Senator James Langford says the law enforcement community does everything it can now to track these potential terrorists. A person may say they hate someone else. Uh, that's not illegal in America. But once they begin to act on that and be able to carry out violence on it, that is acting on it. That is illegal behavior. It could also put the United States in a difficult position globally to knowingly let suspected sympathizers travel abroad that's and join ISIS, Whoa. only to commit some of the worst atrocities. That was close. We have seen in modern times. I'm Jeff Barn mm. reporting. Top congressional Republican leaders will not go to Selma, Alabama this weekend to mark the 50th anniversary of the bloody Sunday morning. Officials say House Speaker John Boehner, the Senate and House Majority Leaders, and the House Majority Whip will not be there. Okay. Alright guys, that's all for this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Ride. And next episode, we're going to continue going through the self code. This is Barn Black. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.